Welcome back to another Beginner Basics tutorial with me, Andy. For today's practice, we're going to move through Chaturanga Dandasana, or four limp staff pose. This posture is an intermediate to advanced pose, even though it's very commonly integrated in beginner vinyasa classes. Chaturanga is often moved through very quickly in sequences such as Surya Namaskar A, Surya Namaskar B, or even Surya Namaskar C. So today, to move into Chaturanga Dandasana, that is how we are going to progress. So when you're ready, we're going to come to a standing position, feet together on the mat. Inhale, arms overhead. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, send the tailbone out behind us, lengthen through the spine, perfect. And on the exhale, we're going to step or float back into Chaturanga. So planting the hands onto the mat. Beautiful. And then stepping back into the posture. As you exhale, lowering the body down into Chaturanga. Beautiful. So as you can see here, as he drops, the hands are back towards the bottom of his rib cage. This is perfect. We want about a 90 degree bend at the wrist into a 90 degree bend at the elbow. Go ahead and relax all the way down. Thank you. Chaturanga is not an easy posture to hold. So as we work through the alignment here, we're gonna take a lot of breaks. When you are in Chaturanga, you want that tricep, you want the meat of your arm to be in alignment with your side body. This is not a natural point of balance. So it's going to feel very awkward and it's not gonna feel right when you first start practicing this. That's why the key to Chaturanga is practice. It takes a lot of flexibility through the wrist as well as a lot of strength and stability through the triceps, through the shoulder, and across the back. On your next inhale and exhale, lift into Chaturanga. Beautiful. While you're preparing and while you're building that muscle memory, you can use something like props. I'm going to slide a block directly underneath of his sternum. Go ahead and settle onto it. Beautiful. This allows you to take rest during your Chaturanga Dandasana repetitions without dropping all the way to the floor. The last thing you want to do in Chaturanga is allow your shoulders to dip forward. That's going to just send your body forward and you're going to collapse on yourself. Chaturanga helps build the strength for a lot of inversions moving forward as well, which require that strength through the shoulders and across the back to keep your body up and stable. This bend through the arm and down to the forearm through the wrist is very common in a lot of inversions. So building the strength here and having a solid, correctly aligned foundation is very important. The last thing that I want to focus on here is the neck alignment. So if you look here, this is a neutral alignment and this is good. If as you're moving into Chaturanga, your gaze goes out to about a 45 degree angle, that's also perfectly fine. The only thing we want to avoid in this posture is craning the neck to look straight forward. It's an unnatural neck alignment that puts a lot of extra pressure on the top of the spine, and we want to avoid that. If, as you're moving through your vinyasa sequence, this posture is still too difficult, if you don't quite have the strength yet, that's perfectly okay. Take your time. A great modification for this is simply to bend the knees. So go ahead and drop your knees down to the mat. It shortens the weight and it shortens the amount of body that's planking that we have to support here. So on the next inhale prep and exhale, pushing back up into Chaturanga. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and slide the block out. What we want to focus on here is how nice and flat that spine is from tailbone through top of head. This is perfect. It's perfectly fine that the thighs are leveraged. Keep that core engaged. Keep Mula Bandha locked, pulling up on that perineum. Keep the quads engaged. And on the exhale, lower back down. Beautiful. Chaturanga Dandasana requires full engagement all the way through the front body. So when you're in this posture, you're going to want to pull up on the kneecaps to keep those quads engaged. You don't want to tighten too much through the glutes. That puts extra strain on the hips. But you do want to make sure that the hips are in line with the rest of your spine. If you're taking the modification with the bent knees, it's perfectly fine that from the hips you're leveraging down. But over time, continue to work on it and take the full posture. 
So we're going to take Chaturanga Dandasana one more time. Planting the hands right by those lower rib cages again. Inhale to prepare yourself. And exhale, we lift. Again, going for that nice neutral neck. 45 degree angle is perfectly fine. Nice and flat over the triceps. Nice and flat spine. Nice and engaged through the quads, pulling up on those kneecaps. And nice and strong and grounding through the feet. When you're ready, we're going to exhale and lower back to the mat. I hope this helps you as you're progressing through your practice. This is a great way to build that foundational strength necessary. And as you're moving through your practice, regardless if it's your first time in a class or regardless if you've been practicing for years, do what modification you need to do to make sure that you're taking the correct alignment and activating the right muscles for each posture. That is what is important and what is foundational to building a safe practice that you can continue for a lifetime. Thank you for practicing with me today, and I'll see you next time.